All right, so we know now that Gatsby can work with multiple data sources and it can add them all to our GraphQL layer. However, for it to do this, for each source that we use, we need to install and register a source plugin. And that way Gatsby knows how to connect to that data source. Now the source plugins are all registered inside the Gatsby config file inside the plugins array right here. Now, sometimes plugins can be registered as just a string, the name of the plugin, other times as an object when they need extra configuration options. Now, plugins also need to be installed into our project using NPM, so Gatsby can find them as well. So if we take a look at the Gatsby website, we can see if we go to plugins right here, a list of top plugins and different types of plugins, we can also search for them here. So if I search for source right here, then we're going to see a load of different source plugins. So the one we're going to use is this one at the top, Gatsby Source File System, because we want to use files and add them to our GraphQL layer so we can query them in our GraphQL queries and get information about them and the content inside them. So if we scroll down here, it says this is how we install it. First of all, npm install Gatsby source file system. So we'll do that in a second. But also down here, it shows us how to set it up. So look, we're registering this inside the plugins array. And inside here, we have an object. Well, it shows us two different objects because we can have multiple different instances of the file system source plugin. So a single instance basically tells Gatsby how to get documents from a single directory. So it has a resolve property, this object, which is basically telling Gatsby which source plugin we're using. Then it has an options object and inside there a name, which is just the name of this instance of the plugin. And then a path which tells Gatsby which directory to look in for files. So Gatsby will then use this to add those files to our GraphQL layer, anything inside this directory. So the first thing we need to do then is install this plugin. So let me grab that and come over here. I'm gonna open up the terminal. I'm gonna to go to a new terminal because Gatsby Develop is running in this one. And I'll just paste it in right here to install it. And now that's installed, let's go back over here and I'm just going to copy an instance of this plugin right here. So let me copy this and paste it over here inside the plugins array like so. Now we need to change this a little bit to match what we want to use the plugin for. So the first thing I'm going to do is update this path property so that it doesn't look inside a pages folder and instead looks inside a notes folder. Now that doesn't exist at the minute, but we will make it. We'll also change the name of this instance to notes as well. So I'm going to save that. Then I'm going to create inside the source folder a notes folder. And I'm just going to create a couple of different files in here. One called foo.txt and we'll add foo into that and then another one called bar.txt and then we're going to add bar into this. Okay, so we have a couple of files here and we've also set up this instance of this source plugin to look into this folder right here. So what does this mean? Well, it means that Gatsby can now add anything inside this thing right here to our GraphQL layer using this plugin. So Remember, whenever we change this file, Gatsby config, we have to restart the server. So I'm going to cancel out of this process and then run it again, Gatsby develop. And now that's done, what we can do is go over to graphical and we should be able to query those files. Now, notice we can use all file right here or just file. And this is generally the case. Whenever you add a source plugin, it's going to give you an all version and just a singular version. Now, if you wanted to get a single file, we would go into this thing right here to query a single file. If you wanted to get a list of all files, then we'd use all files. So let's try this out, all files. And then down here, we need to go into the nodes. We need to query the nodes because Gatsby in GraphQL sees the nodes as files. So each file is an individual node. And then we can get different properties of each node as well. So I could come down here and I could say that I want, for example, the relative path right here. And if I click on play, then we can see those two files right here, foo.txt and bar.txt. Now, I could also get the relative directory, and for both of those at the minute, it's going to be an empty string. And this relative directory just basically means, is it in another folder inside notes? 
So if I create a new folder called test and then place one of these things inside that folder, if I go back over here and play this again, you're going to notice this one now has a relative directory of test because it's in that folder relative to where we're looking inside this notes folder. Okay. So that's how we query these things right here. Now, what happens if we also want to read data or read files from somewhere else? Well, we could do that. What I could do is open up this source folder. I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call this one projects like so. Now, what I'm going to do is just add a new markdown file and we'll talk more about markdown files and how they're constructed and how we use them over the next couple of lessons. But for now, let me just add this file and I'm going to call it dojo hyphen coffee hyphen house dot md and i'm going to paste in some content again don't worry about this for now we'll talk about this over the next couple of lessons but eventually all of our project data is going to be driven by markdown files but anyway say i now also wanted to grab this file well if i run this if i try to get all files play this it's not going to get at me. And that's because our source plugin right here for the file system is not configured to look inside this folder, only inside notes. If we want to look inside projects as well, then we have to also add another instance of this plugin. So let me copy that and paste it down here and say also look inside the projects folder. So for every different folder that we have, we need a different instance. I'm going to call this project as well. Now I'm going to cancel out of the current process down here so we can restart the server, Gatsby develop. And now if I come over here and if I refresh and press play, then we're going to see this file as well. So it's still getting all the files and we're not saying where we want those files from. It's just looking in all the places that it can look that's registered inside notes and inside projects. And it's getting all of them back together. So this is getting back all the files, but what if we want to limit this just so it gets us files from a single folder, for example, just from the project folder? Well, we can do that by using what's known as a query argument. So I could use these things up here. I could go to filter. And then if I scroll right down here, this thing right here, source instance name, and then I could say I want it to equal, that's EQ right here, something, and I want it to equal projects so this is what the query looks like right here we're saying we want all the files but only we're going to filter them where the source instance name equals projects now the source instance name is the name of the instance right here so in this case what we're saying is only get us files where the source instance name is projects so only look inside this folder and get us those files so if i click play now then we can see it just gets us this single file. Okay then, so right now there's not much we can really do with this data in our application. All of this information is stuff like file size, the path of the file, etc. Ideally, what we want to do is to process the file into something that we can work with so that we can use all the data inside the file, all of this content, and we can pump that into our page components. For example, markdown files are a great option for making things like articles, blog posts, or in our case, project details for our portfolio. So inside the MD file, the markdown file, we have a lot of project information. It would be nice if we can access this easily and maybe generate HTML based on this content. Now to do that, we'll need to talk more about markdown files and transformer plugins, and we'll do that in the next video.